Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. This time on how to beat Festival Gross Insane, the crazed gross cat. This level, a little bit like Crazed Titan, differs from the normal main strategy in Battle Cats of lots of meat shields and damaging stuff behind it, because, like the Crazed Titan, the Crazed Gross is a waving unit. Except the Crazed Gross is guaranteed to do its waves, and it comes in multiple numbers, unlike the Titans 1. As this guide is an episode in the Beginner Guide series, there are some things that the series will expect you have before you go into this level. Unit-wise, we're expecting that you have the following Crazed Units. The crazed Lizard evolves into Dragon, the Crazed Fish evolves into Whale, and the Crazed Titan evolves into Crazed Mythical Titan. Let's now look at the treasure expectations. It's to be expected that you've got all superior treasures on Empire of Cats, though some of the treasures won't actually have an impact on this level. If you don't have all of your treasures there by this point, you're going to be experiencing all sorts of different trouble at different stages around this point. Please get your treasure. Getting the Mysterious Force treasure just makes sense, really. Getting it 100% reduces your cat cannon recharge time, and that's always a good thing. Similarly, we're not looking for cat cannon power here, but if you want to be on the same plane as where I am, cosmic energy would be useful to get. Both of them are into the future chapter 1 and 2. Luckily, the rest of the treasures around here are traded to Alien, Red, Floating, Black, Angel, and none of them appear in the level. So it doesn't matter if you don't have those treasures for this level in particular. For a long time in this beginner series, I've done my best to not use the true forms of basic units, just in case you haven't been able to get them to level 20 plus 10. But now in this level especially is a time where they become absolutely necessary. So two basic true forms that you now need to follow this guide are Jamira, which is Titan Cat, level 20 plus 10, and Island Cat, level 20 plus 10. The reason for that is that they both gain hugely in their their stats upon coming into their true forms. They will just have no impact at all unless you have those true forms for this level. Macho Leg Cat, we've been expecting that to be level 20 plus 10 for a while, and it will remain so. And Dragon, it would be very useful to have its true form King Dragon, level 20 plus 10. However, I don't need you to have it that way for this guide. It's going to work without it, but it will give you a much easier time if you're able to have a level 20 plus 10 Dragon. Dragon. But for the purposes of this, it can still work at level 20 plus 6. Valkyrie, after beating Into the Future Chapter 2 in this guide series, has its true form, which is very important here because that allows it to sometimes freeze units. And if you can get that lucky proc, program random occurrence, often you're going to have a much easier time in the level. And although that's dictated by random chance, this is a no continue stage we're fighting, which means you can force close over and over again until you get the run desired. Unfortunately, much like in Crazed Titan, a lot of it is down to how lucky a run you get. Now you may notice that there are two slots missing. Those are for those of you with Gacha, i.e. rare cat capsule units that can help you. Paris is one that is often used in this strategy. Once stacked up a lot, it can do a lot of damage. But I should probably warn you, I have actually tried using this Paris, and at level 20, it's not all that useful. If you happen to have its cat fruit true form, Cyborg Cat, or have it perhaps at least level 30, it could probably be of use to you. But otherwise, it might actually be a drain on your monies. Something you should definitely do, however, if you happen to have Fisherman Cat, is move both your Crazed Whale and Island up to the top and put Fisherman Cat next to them, or at least in the same top row as them. That will give you two cat combos, one of which helps base defense, which is fair enough, but the other increases unit defense, making it so that the Crazed Grosses take longer to kill the units. That will give you a significantly easier time. This being a wave stage, this is one of those stages where Hacker Cat is not useful. Because there's a lot of movement involved in the level, both back and forth, that both puts Hacker in danger and also kind of renders it useless as the distances are constantly changing and it's not very regular shots are probably going to miss. I don't have it here, but if you have the super rare Katatsu Cat and you're able to true form it, its true form Octopus Cat 
acts as a wave shield. That means that any units behind it are immune from waves, basically making this level a cakewalk. But because these are gacha units and you won't necessarily have them, and there's no way to have them other than rolling until hopefully you get them, and that being entirely down to chance, we're not going to be using them. We're going to be looking at the bare bones strategy and how to beat it with that. Now, I had and will continue to arrange this strategy in this way, as if to separate them into two teams. The top row, notwithstanding Jamira, is the ranged brigade, as I will call it. All four of these units are going to start attacking the Craze Gross from a noticeable range, hopefully stopping it from waving them for at least a little bit. And that's the idea of how to keep that clump of units alive, because if there's enough of them, they'll actually keep knocking back and killing the Craze Gross before it can get to attack them. If you use any of these units, which we'll call the Melee Brigade, the Craze Gross will attack immediately. And it will be important during the battle to separate the use of these two brigades at least at the start of the battle. When we get into a good clump, which we will look at identifying, it's important to have everything out to give yourself the best chance of having an all-powerful clump that will get you to beating the stage. But while you're starting, mixing both clumps together is only going to drain your monies and cause you a lot of trouble. So this stage is pretty monies demanding and the craze gross comes out immediately. So you're going to need a rich cat if at all possible. And seeming as the object of the stage is knocking the craze grosses back whenever you possibly can, sniper the cat is also useful. I haven't experimented with it and I won't bring it here, but actually bringing a CPU might well be useful for the end of the battle when you're having all your units out at once and you're not choosing between them as to which is best to put out. Having the CPU on with your worker cat at max will just let the CPU take the rest of the battle into its own hands and allow you to go off and have a cup of tea. So the Craze Grow stage works quite differently to, for example, the Craze Lizard stage. The reason for that being that your aim is to overwhelm the Craze Grosses. They come out at a constant rate and you will only beat the stage if you're able to move towards the base faster than they are pushing you away from it. Whereas in other levels you are sort of trying to stick it out while defeating units that are there until no more units come out. If you're not defeating the Craze Grosses and they are clumping together into groups of two or more, you're really in trouble and you ought to use force closing to try it again. The most difficult part of the battle is in getting past those first couple of Craze Grosses and being able to densify your clump. The way I'd describe it is that the level's structured around a series of feedback loops that either make it increasingly difficult to beat the stage or increasingly easy, the start being the section that decides which of those it'll be. What I mean by that is, the more damage the Craze Gross does, the thinner your clump, which allows them to build up more Craze Grosses, which thins your clump again, and then you have to force close and try again. The thicker your clump, the less damage Craze Gross is able to do because you're knocking it back more often. The less damage the Craze Gross is able to do, the more units you're able to put into your clump, and so the even less damage the next Craze Gross is able to do, and so on. When we start off the battle, we can leave it for a little bit because the Sniper the Cat is going to deal with these Squire Elves that come towards the base, giving us a nice opportunity to gather together as much money as possible. Why is that important? because we want the clump as immediately as possible to do enough damage to the Craze Gross to knock it back before it can do damage to us. Start off with your ranged units only, then probably introduce a Jamira behind them. By the time the Craze Gross gets to those ranged units, the Jamira won't be putting them at a disadvantage. If that goes well, you'll probably have most of your units left alive after that Craze Gross. Then will be a good point to get your Valkyrie out and some of the ground units. If the second Craze Gross is easily defeated by that clump, you'll see it thickening into quite a damaging clump that stops the third Craze Gross from really doing much damage to you at all. The thing is, what will happen here is partially up to chance. You might overwhelm the Craze Grosses, or they might overwhelm you. If you find yourself not able to build up a huge clump, and instead the Craze Grosses are starting to clump together themselves, that is the point where you have to consign that run to the rubbish bin, force close, 
and try again. This is an example of a run that hasn't worked on the start off. You can see that the crazed grocers are starting to clump together. They're just going to be too powerful to push forward past. So pause it and try again without wasting any of your energy. If the crazed grocers make it to the base, you should bring out the melee crew because, well, they're going to be hitting something, either your units or the base. The crazed titan is kind of a double-edged sword here. It is just about your most usefully tanky unit for killing off these crazed grocers. But once it's there, all you can really put out to defend it are these other two melee units any ranged ones will just get assassinated. With the melee crew, it's important to let them die before you bring out your ranged units again. If at the start of the battle you're bringing out your ranged units while the melee crew are already trying to bite the crazed grocers, all that will happen is your ranged units will just get killed on their way to fighting the crazed grocers. While there is a unit that a wave enemy is hitting, units coming up behind it will get hit by those waves and will probably die before they get where you want them to get, making them essentially just a waste of money. And here we go, here we are waiting for these units to die and so now we bring out the ranged ones and we're going to bring out Valkyrie as well. Hopefully this will form the start of a clump. I'm going to assume that we are going to be successful with our clump and put out the melee brigade as well. If this craze gross is dealt with quickly, our clump will survive and remain. That is, as you can see, helped by Valkyrie managing to freeze the Craze Gross. Again, it's all in where the shots land and whether the Craze Gross lands important shots on you or there it struggles to. Use the Cat Cannon when you can in circumstances where you've got units far ahead of your main clump of units. You want them all beginning to attack at the same time, otherwise the Craze Gross will hit the one that's first and in front and just wave damage the ones behind it without you being able to use the units behind it to get damage off. As you can see, we're pushing forward a bit in the battle now. This could all go to pot if this Craze Gross gets a lot of damage off, but as you could see, we managed to flummox it and have it not do too much damage to us. That's allowed us to get a decent clump going, although our Valkyrie has died, and you can see we really suffered there. This Craze Gross is thinning out our clump, and it may end up that we have to go back to square one. Luckily, that one is dead and we're still pushing forward slightly. So at this point, still keep putting out all your units. By the time you're midway through the battlefield, you probably need to be putting out all of your units in the hope of continually pushing forward. You really are just hoping that the Craze Gross RNG treats you kindly. As you can see, it has. We've now got an almost clear view to the base and only one more Craze Gross to try and deal with before we get there. And our clump is big enough that the Craze Gross is very rarely going to get attacks in. And once you connect with the base, don't think that means you're going to win. Craze Grosses are still going to come out, and if you haven't got enough damage going, they will knock you back. Luckily, this one was too late and we managed to win. But it's important to bear in mind that it's not going to necessarily happen that easily. I had to do two force closes during this run to get to this victory and quite a number of attempts to get ourselves started and a clump developed. The Craze Gross Cat is probably the first wave unit that you'll have and this can be very useful for when you're looking to damage an enemy behind a front line or if you want to clear out a whole load of peons which is sometimes the case in these levels. When this unit evolves, when you've beaten its Manic variant, Manic Macho Legs, it can form into a very useful tanky unit that is used in a lot of strategies simply to just get a little bit of damage off against things in a cost effective way. Getting this unit does set you up very well for the future which unfortunately can't be said for another unit that we'll be looking at getting purely because it unlocks the ability to do manic stages. I hope this guide has helped you to beat the Craze Gross Cat, but if you have any questions about it or queries or it's not working for you in some way, please let me know in as much detail as you can in the comments and I will be routinely checking these beginner guide videos to try and help where you've asked for help. Around this point in the game, you should be pushing forward with the Stories of Legend and also with Into the Future Chapter 3, according to this guide. I'm aware that if you've come at it differently and you're just looking at this tutorial as a one-off, you might have already completed all of Into the Future. In which case, you might want to consider using Awaken Bahamut to run in and try and get hits on Craze Grosses. That relies on decent timing, something that isn't my preserve, but it might well work for you. Just try and avoid those waves.
So overall, I hope that was useful for you. And in the next guides, we shall be moving on towards both the end of Into the Future Chapter 3 and towards our first legend unit in the Stories of Legend. And after that, tackling the crazed bird cat. So I'll bid you goodbye, and I hope you enjoyed.